Welcome to Marvelicious Toys. We bring you news and reviews of Marvel toys, statues, and more. Because not all Marvel collections can be bagged and boarded. They're not just toys, they're Marvelicious. You know, I was worried. I was worried because it never happens that you find something before me. You know, and if you do, it's just that your truck came the day earlier and then the next truck I see around here, it's on there. I had to wait two more trucks at Toys R Us before I finally found them. The most worrisome thing is you're well aware how many trucks are hitting your Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> Any good collector should know what days their trucks are coming in. That is true. And if they change things up, I always find somebody and ask. That's right. Otherwise, you're just wasting time. You could walk into Toys R Us every day and not find anything. But if it's a truck day, then it's like Christmas. I guess my Toys R Us is different. Truck day does not equal stock day. It just means it's sitting in the back day. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> well, anyway, yes, I was lucky enough to find one. And in the run up to that, I got so antsy trying to find one that I was at other stores and I ended up buying a WWE wrestling figure who was in a suit just because I was so excited to get a Coulson. So I now own Triple H wearing a suit. So <laughs> that was my stand in for Coulson until I found this. But unfortunately, he's way too big to stand with the other guys. That's the saddest purchase I've ever heard since I've thought about chip collecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, let's let's not judge too much Dorito guy. <laughs> but yeah, let's let's look at this pack that seemingly at first seems weird to be called Avengers rather than S.H.I.E.L.D. Ah, all right. I got to admit, I may be a bad Marvel fan, but I gave up on the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. TV series really early on. And because of Avengers 2 and just general curiosity and things looking good, like having Mockingbird in there and Absorbing Man and whatnot, we've been not binge watching, but when we watch television, it's been Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And we just got past the end of season one. And I'm still not sure what to think. It got better, which means it went from a show that I wouldn't watch to a show that were it not Marvel, I'd pay half attention to in TiVo and watch w when I could. It's about as good as Chuck is where I'd put it. Hmm. Without the humor. Chuck in the later years. <laughs> but in the like season finale of season one, and I'm not even going to say spoiler alert because, well, we're almost a full year later now. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Jackson appears for like half an episode. It wasn't just a cameo. He was there and a big part of the climax of the episode. So wait, where does that happen in real life, though? What Was that out around the time Winter Soldier was coming out? About a month after Winter Soldier. It was okay. after Hydra was revealed because the show was well planned. If you were an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. person and didn't go see Winter Soldier, you're like, eh, I'm going to wait for video on that but you watch the TV show, that whole movie is ruined because the Tuesday after Winter Soldier came out, all over Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was Hail Hydra. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but only with Bill Paxton. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, Hydra was revealed to have infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. and there were clips of helicarriers crashing sh being shown on televisions. Hmm. So, <laughs> but in the season finale, Nick Fury shows up and one episode before that, Maria Hill showed up and in the episode where Nick Fury was there, he made Agent Coulson the new director of S.H.I.E.L.D. and called him an Avenger. Uh-huh. So what we have here is a late season one Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. three pack. <laughs> <laughs> It'll work. <laughs> that just doesn't quite fit the branding quite so well. <laughs> so, yes, Avengers. But yeah. Nick Fury called Coulson an Avenger, so I guess it fits. Maria Hill, you're still just Stark's secretary or whatever you're doing these days. Right, so it's Avenger and a half, <laughs> which is, you know, half of the pack, so I suppose. So it's kind of like you get to be an Avenger for just being in S.H.I.E.L.D. and it's a participation ribbon kind of thing. No, you've got to be part of the Avenger initiative. Ah. And Coulson was a big part of the lead up to building the Avengers, too, so I think he deserves at least an honorary... Avengers badge, right? Outside of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., just from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I'm really happy to have an Agent Coulson figure and a Maria Hill figure. Agent Coulson especially, because he was such a big part of all those early movies. And then Maria Hill, I mean, she was a big part of the Avengers. At least she was there. She didn't do much. 
but she was there. She's in the next film. I'm glad to have her figure. Nick Fury, yeah, we got you a couple times now, but hey, never sad to have another Sam Jackson figure. I even bought the Shaft figure by McFarlane when that was out. Oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it could have been a worse figure. It could have been a better figure. I mean, they could have done something that made you almost want to buy more than one. They could have put just a general shield agent in there, a shield soldier, almost making you want to get two or three of them. So it's nice that everything in this pack is a single character, not a a troop builder in any way. That said, I'm just going to say this right now. I bought this now because I'm really excited for Avengers, if you can't tell by chip collecting and ego collecting. But also, I bought it for the show. (laughs) <laughs> but there's a part of me in the back of my mind that went, let's see, what are the latest Legends exclusives that have hit Toys R Us in multi-packs? And how deep of the discount did it go for that X-Men? Yeah, it got down to under $50. Yeah, so part of me thinks, at the very least, I got this for 40 At the very least, it's going to be 30 ish around the time of the movie, I bet. I bet there's like a... 25% off or at, they always do the buy one get one 40% off so you could get two for like 65 and split it with a friend wait 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 these these are 50 bucks not 40 I paid 40 what I paid 49.99 rang up for me 39.99 it did say promo maybe I got it on a sale week ah maybe see that's the other thing that screwed me you got a week earlier and it was on sale <laughs> <laughs> It's still worth, to me, still worth the 50 bucks, so. But you're right. If it goes on clearance and I can find one for 30 or below, I I will be buying another one. Well, let's take a look at these figures. We started to just a little bit last week. The first one, we'll go with the new director of S.H.I.E.L.D., who he's so important, he's not in the next Avengers film, Phil Coulson. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe they're hiding it. It's not on IMDb yet. I love that when he like ran into Lady Sif and she's like, I'll tell Thor you're well. He's like, I'd prefer to keep that to myself. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> now, my first question with this figure is, is he comes with the big old gun. Is this the gun he was holding in Avengers on the on the helicarrier? Yeah, this is the gun that was modeled after the destroyer. This is that gun. OK, that's cool then. I'm just making sure that it wasn't just some random G.I. Joe looking blaster that they threw in there, but... No, no, it is just like the gun he was holding. I mean, I remembered the glowy part at the end of the gun and the various handles. He actually pulls it out. Fury hands it to him in that episode, so it's used in the that episode I was referring to. Excellent. So again, late season one Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. pack. <laughs> <laughs> well, just sticking with the gun, looking at it, there is quite a bit of detail just in this gun alone. I mean... Like you said, it's got painted glowy bits on the front and the sides of the vents. It looks like there might even be two colors in there, orange and yellow, to give it a nice little glow effect. But beyond that, the sculpt is awesome. There's a scope on there, and there's indents and crevices and all kinds of stuff going on with this thing. Maybe the gun is so detailed because you've got an action figure in a suit. Yeah. (laughs) Honestly, in this whole set, that is like the newest piece, I think. It's one of them. I'm surprised that they would make a special sculpt for a gun for a three-year-old movie, despite being a huge hit movie. This gun is pretty unrepeatable. Like you said, it's not just a G.I. Joe gun. And if they ever were to make another G.I. Joe figure, they couldn't use this gun in it. It would almost makes you wonder if this wasn't planned to come out much sooner than it did. And since it didn't hit two years ago on the schedule, they just decided to hold back on this until it was coming up on the next Avengers movie. That said, I mean, I could see you just paint this a few different colors and not give it the two-tone, and all of a sudden, next time we get a Hydra agent, Hail Hydra, here's the gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the double-handle type thing reminds me of the types of guns we were talking about last year with the Legends and the Hydra Trooper and the AIM Trooper. Yep, but much cooler than those. Those always come off really almost cartoony and kiddish, where this feels like a real real weapon in a sci-fi world. No complaints. I mean, you you are more enamored with the gun than I am, but I was happy to have the gun. <laughs> Again, it's because it's with an action figure in a suit. What are you going to say about his suit? Well, you can tell that it's very form-fitting, and it is a slim-fit suit with his skinny tie, and it's clearly an Armani. Wh- what? What are you going to say about the action figure in a suit, guys? Well, the coat is actually its own piece, so now I'm looking for a tag to see what brand it might be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Van Heusen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Margie, I think you'd be surprised 
how popular this figure is going to be. I think a lot of collectors are waiting for a good suited body to put in their collections. And this this doesn't disappoint in that area. So you're saying every collector's crazy for a sharp dressed man? <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> you might be saying that. <laughs> understand people being excited about Colson, but I mean, I, I guess that you could also have the guy from the Matrix or Men in Black. I was thinking Norman Osborn with a different head. You get a Norman Osborn head on here. Now you have business suit Norman. Yep. A cool Tony Stark custom. Professor X. Yep. There's a lot of possibilities with just a regular old suit. Like I, you know what? Remember how excited I got about that three and three quarter inch Iron Man in plain clothes from a couple of years ago? And you don't like characters with loafers. No, that goes against my my collecting, you know, so <laughs> it's just different enough in a line that's filled with, you know, people in outrageous costumes and robots and stuff like that. That I think it's something that has been long awaited by a lot of people. Now, I said the gun was new, but now I'm thinking about this and you're talking about the body. And I was talking with Jerry, who does our timely reviews on here, and we were trying to think, what body is this? Did they do six inch Joes where like this was a G.I. Joe character or did they actually just make a suited top? I mean, really, it's the coat and the sleeves. The top's pretty basic. It's a shirt top. But is this a new thing to have the six inch suited man? I believe we're looking at a 100% new character here from head to toe. Wow. Heads to toe. Heads to toe. <laughs> That's right. You get two. I'm going to give severe credit just staying on the suit with the tie. I love that they did the metallic shiny on the tie. The tie is very odd. I I'm kind of weirded out by the fact that it's malleable and you can make like a Dilbert action figure out of it kind of, you know. <laughs> Stick his tie to the side of his head or something. But it's weird that the tie is so easy to manipulate. And it's kind of weird that it is iridescent in parts. Well, it looks like the kind of tie I wear. I have to wear a tie every day to work. And I go for shiny ties. So this is a tie I would actually wear. And the fact that it's an accessory works for me. Because, yeah, you can, like, have it hanging off to the side. He can be disheveled with the tie. <laughs> Yeah, it's not just painted on, which is awesome. I'm afraid that that would break off, though. Like, I don't want to move it too much, but I feel like it's just glued on right around the knot. It's pegged in, I believe. It's not glued on. There's a peg. Oh, well, I'll let you mess around with yours, and if you rip it off, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the funniest we've said all night. <laughs> yeah, you go ahead and destroy your toy. <laughs> yeah, my store has plenty. I can go buy another. <laughs> So let, let's talk about the heads that come with, with this figure. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure you're like me and you're going to display this with the sunglasses, right? With the sunglasses on, I'm going to give them some serious credit. This is almost a Hot Toys good Clark Gregg likeness. Yeah, because I think it's all relative because he's got the glasses on. I don't think that the unsung sunglass one looks like him. It looks like a very perturbed man with a large nose and weird eyes. My thinking on the plain-faced version is it's close, but they used metallic paint for his eyes, so he looks like a weird kind of robot. They're, again, the iridescent blue. Yeah, it's it's a metallic blue. Yeah, you're right. That's a weird choice to use that metallic blue in the eyes, because when the light catches it just right, it looks like a photograph of somebody with the red eye almost, but blue. <laughs> and... With the pursed lips and that jaw and everything, I don't know. I'm getting kind of that Norman Osborn view. It looks very sharp. Clark Gregg doesn't have pointed features, but this has given him pointed features and he looks evil. Are you talking about like William Defoe? Yeah, kind of. Well, if anybody's looking for a Peyton Manning figurehead, this might be the closest you'll come. Same hairline, same kind of smirk on his face. Yeah, it kind of does look like Peyton Manning. Yeah, I don't know. The nose is much smaller than Peyton Manning's. Yeah, Peyton Manning's face, his whole face is just kind of stretched out. Yeah. But like features wise, I could give this a pass as Peyton Manning. But yeah, you know what's... yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Peyton Manning has those metallic blue eyes. He does. He's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's weird. I'm trying to compare these two heads and it's got to be just the eyes because I think it's the exact same head that they started with and then sculpted sunglasses over it. Because it's not like he has a different expression on the other face. He, doesn't he have does. He really does. On mine, the plain face has like an upturned smirk, whereas the glasses face has a grim face. Oh, you're right. 
the lines on the nose are different. Uh, they are more broad on the regular face. They kind of come down a little bit sharper on the sunglasses face. Yeah, I take that back. Maybe the back part of his head is the same. I'm even going to go so far as to say his nose is shaped differently on what? the two heads. Wow. He has like this ridge on the nose, you know, kind of a curvature at the upper cartilage of the nose without the sunglasses. And it's just a straight triangle on the sunglass face nose. Hmm. Well, I'll be I'll be a collector. <laughs> so yeah it's very different and so yes you are correct when you say i'm displaying him sunglasses on this other head it can go in the parts box because it is not worthy it, this is not one of those cases like the black widow from captain america where you want to pick up a second body to display both heads because you just can't decide which one's better this one we know which one's better exactly moving on to the next figure the one that i feel like i already have this exact figure nick fury <laughs> this does look very familiar. Well, I'll tell you, we have almost this exact figure. And I was certain that this was just a repack of the Nick Fury we got in the original Captain America six inch line, which was a Walmart exclusive line. And I thought for sure that that was the exact same figure that we were getting here. Just just remembering it. And for the most part, it is. But what really, really, really threw me off was when I started looking at these, if you look at his boots, He's got much more substantial boots on in this new version. The older version, he has like really skinny, almost paratrooper boots on. Isn't this just the Punisher? Yes, it's the Punisher. And they've used this for Red Skull. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a buck that they've been getting some more use out of. But it's new on those other figures just from the knees down. Because it is using that original Nick Fury from the knees up. That's the same torso, same jacket, same midsection, same thighs with the holster on one. It's just from the knees down that they changed out those boots. So this is just different enough from that other one that if you're, <laughs> if you're the type of guy that has to have every Nick Fury, here's another one for you. I mean, this one looks pretty B.A. I mean, he's got great boots. He's all decked out with all kinds of crap on his legs that he can kill you with. He's got lots of guns, too, and holsters. And he comes with a couple guns that are kind of funky. Again, I think they might be Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. guns because they shoot, like, stun guns only. They call them icers. <laughs> yeah, with the nice blue line going through them. Uh-huh. <laughs> Which is actually a repaint of the, the gun that he came with before, I believe. But not a big deal. It looks different enough. That raises a problem. Like, I gave one to Nick and one to Maria Hill because there's only two guns in the pack. So they got to share, right? Or somebody's without weapons. Or you buy another Punisher. <laughs> yeah. And did Maria Hill ever pick up a single gun? I guess she did early on in the fight with Loki. All right. So yeah, aside from the little differences in the sculpt below the knees, this one, he's finally wearing all black. That previous one, he had kind of a darker charcoal gray shirt on. And now it looks like his goatee has come in a little bit more. Seems to be the same, same head sculpt, which is a pretty good Sam Jackson likeness, but maybe a little bit more of a fuller goatee this time around. They did make him look very young compared to how he's looked recently. Yeah, and in fact, I got to take something back because the more I thought about this, you mentioned it, the face, the goatee, the eye patch. This is not Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Nick Fury because he wore sunglasses because he burned the eye patch at the end of Winter Soldier. <sighs> and he was wearing a totally different outfit and he just wore shades the whole time. See, if they would have given us this same body with Nick Fury with shades on, that would have put it over the top. Yeah, that would have been pretty freaking cool. That alternate head, maybe. It, because he did that also in The Winter Soldier, so. Yeah, because, I mean, even though this is somewhat improved, at the end of the day, it just, I don't feel like I need yet another Nick Fury figure. Especially if you have that original one, it's not different enough to make you crazy. I agree completely. He's That's why I did him in the middle. Kind of a lackluster figure, only because we already have him. But for anyone who didn't find him, and I remember those Walmart exclusive six-inch figures were a pain. Yeah, to a degree. And then some end up going on clearance. So it's, you know, it all depends on what part of the country you're in and how many your Walmarts got in. But yeah, it definitely wasn't an even distribution across the, the planet. And then finally, we end with Maria Hill, who was in the three and three quarter inch line thanks to that exclusive helicarrier at comic-con now we get her in the legend scale and we've gotten her the comic version before but not the movie version here she comes with her bluetooth headset <laughs> sculpted right on there 
Like, there is exactly one degree when you turn this figure that it looks like Kobe Smolders. Like, it's not from the side, not from the side, not from the side. There it is, and it's gone. Are you saying just directly from straight on? No, it's somewhere between straight on and to the side, and it's just like, there's that flash of recognition, but, I mean, they gave her too sharp of a face, I think. She's a very pretty woman, but she doesn't have a very sharp face, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not that she's not smart. <laughs> And I feel bad. She's like the only female who didn't get ginormous knockers. Yeah. Looking at this, one would think that they just reused the Black Widow body. And that's almost what I thought. But you're right, Marjorie. They re-sculpted the torso and upper body to be unique to this figure. And if you compare her to Black Widow, her her knockers are are substantially smaller than Black Widow's. Extraordinarily. They also gave her a huge thigh gap and giant hips. Yeah, that's kind of the same thing as the Black Widow figure. So those are the parts they are reusing. It probably didn't look weird and out of place with giant knockers. (laughs) You're right. A little more balanced. Yeah, because they made the top of her so demure, the large hips really just make her look like she's got huge hips. Yeah, I can see that. It wasn't bothering me before, but now I can't not see it. Thanks, Marjorie. You're welcome. Anytime. So they have the new upper torso that is not a reuse from Black Widow, but the bottom half is Black Widow and the arms probably are Black Widow, right? Well, I don't think so. Because if you look at Black Widow, she's got the little stingers on her on her wrists that are sculpted on there. So that part's at least new. And the upper arms seem to have less detail, or maybe they're just not painted the same way they are on Black Widow. On Black Widow, it's got a gray paint and some black paint. So it's hard to tell if that's just not showing up because it's not painted differently, but at least the lower arms are different. The face, I agree with Marjorie. At certain angles, I see Kobe Smulders. At other angles, I see just like woman. <laughs> <laughs> they gave her the same metallic eyes as Coulson. Yeah, must be a new thing they're trying out. But my biggest disappointment, she's actually my least favorite figure in the set. Not because of her hips. I had no problem with her hips. Still don't. I have a problem with her guns. Why can't she pull her guns out of her holster? Why does she have a fist that can't hold a gun? And in fact, it looks like a club hand. <laughs> it does. It looks like she has Aww. a horrible birth defect. Yeah, that fist hand is horrible. <laughs> I mean, There's just no good way to pose it. It just looks bad. Maybe up in a hail hydra? <laughs> yeah. Maybe she's angry and has her fist in the air because of how I met your mother ended so poorly. (laughs) Maybe she's trying to pry her fingers apart on the hand. (laughs) Yeah, that that's a bad hand. And, you know, like the same problem we had with the Black Widow figure, they made guns that are just sculpted into into her leg there. But one thing that they did fix that really bothered me on that Black Widow figure was remember how that holster is supposed to go up and look like it attaches to her belt? But like if you move it, it's just kind of flailing off to the side. Mm -hmm. Well, on Maria Hill, they attached it. She's got a new belt that it actually attaches to. So when you move it, the belt moves up with it rather than having weird straps that show that she has a gun glued to her thigh. And yet now I'm worried about breaking her straps the same way you were worried about breaking Colson's tie. I wouldn't move those legs too much. (laughs) (laughs) But that was a nice thing to fix. Now you've really made me just want a backup set for when these figures break. Thanks, Justin. (laughs) No, Justin, we're not doing redundancy. (laughs) Well, I'm moving it around quite a bit and it gives you quite a bit of play there before it feels like it's going to, it's not going to snap it. Actually, when you move her legs out, the belt moves up her torso, so... Yeah, I think you're all right to move it. She's, it's not hindering the posability whatsoever. Thanks for watching this video. You can see full episodes of Marvelicious Toys with more collecting news and reviews at MarveliciousToys.com. We also have thousands of toy and collectible photos in our photo gallery. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, make mine Marvelicious.